Welcome to the British Museum. Hi. Hot on the heels of the mostly underwhelming Stellaris Cosmic Storm DLC, the developers have just announced another DLC will be released in October. Stellaris Grand Archive Story Pack will be coming out on Tuesday, October 29th, and we've got quite a bit of information about what that DLC will contain. This is the last DLC in the Stellaris Season 8, which is a brand new thing they've just introduced, I think, following the Crusader Kings 3 model. The jewel of this season almost certainly being the Machine Age, which was released back in May to, I want to say, thunderous applause by the community. Then the mostly underwhelming Cosmic Storms we've just had. And finally, we will finish off with Grand Archive. We've got a feature list. We've got lots of valuable bits of information. Let's dive in and find out what on earth is going on. Let's start at the beginning with the full and complete feature list of this DLC that is coming out in just over a month at the time of recording. That is the end of October the 29th. We are getting Space Fauna Capture, Breeding and Modification Systems. If you've ever wanted to have only Space Fauna in your fleet, that is, you know, Amoeba, Tianki, that sort of thing. I might be including Crystalline Entities there, but I'm not sure they quite count because they don't really breed, they're crystal, I'm not sure, maybe. Maybe we'll be able to harvest those for genetic material. Honestly, yeah, unsure on that one. But if you wanted that to be expanded and have a, a full system, this might be the DLC for you. We're going to get 151 specimens to collect and display across events from Grand Archive and the base game, and over 240 specimens will be included total, distributed across other Stellaris content, other DLCs. We're getting 15 new relics, two brand new tradition trees, Archivism and Domestication, you can guess which one of those is about, you know, uh, relic hunting and which one of those is about Space Fauna. Two brand new Origins, Primal Calling and Treasure Hunters. Again, you can see where the theme is going here. Uh, one is all about uh, exploration and discovery of relics and specimens, and the other clearly about Space Fauna. Two new Civics, Beastmasters and Galactic Curators. I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but you can see where this is going. Two new forms of spaceborne life, the Cotholoids and the Void Worms. A new possible mid-game crisis, the Void Worm Plague. Three new music tracks. And then new events, anomalies, archaeology sites, technologies, galactic community resolutions, and more. From a surface read of the features, this is going to be quite a full DLC. It is an event pack. Pricing looks like it's going to be around $15 or 15 euros, which is... I think a little bit expensive, but still in line with current pricing structures we've previously had. It does look more reasonably priced than the rather expensive Astral Planes. To quote a fantastic comment that was posted on the Dev Diary just after release. So, it has finally come to this, ladies and gentlemen, the Bubbles DLC. Let's start off with that new feature, the Grand Archive then. The Space British Museum, uh, sorry, the, the Grand Archive, I should say, preserves and exhibits the most valuable artifacts that we will collect throughout the galaxy. The galaxy is vast and filled with artifacts. The Grand Archive DLC adds 151 specimens to the base game, but the devs have revisited all of the content ever created for Stellaris to add more. The overall total is now 240 unique specimens. You can collect them all and display the prize pieces in your own Grand Archive, which is apparently no mere rock collection. We've had a little bit of a sneak peek of this new tab in the trailer. Here we can see the Grand Archive and Minor Artifacts. You'll have a collection that has a host of different artifacts we can pick up that will, I believe, grant us some additional benefits in our empire. Some of these do seem to be empire-wide, whereas others are empire-specific. What do I mean by that? Well, as we can see in line 2, Galactic History, some benefits seem to produce some unity or society research. I imagine that's just a flat bonus to our overall production of plus 8 unity or plus 15 society research. Whereas on the top line, Aesthetic Wonders, they are providing amenities, they are providing stability, lots of other things, uh, pop growth speed, for example. I believe that might be resource output from jobs as well, trade value. I think that's going to be an empire-wide bonus we get on all of our planets. These bonuses aren't meaningless either, ladies and gentlemen. These are actually pretty good to have as little extra bonuses with very low upkeep, especially if it is an empire-wide effect. 
We can also see the relic tab isn't being replaced here. So what the Grand Archive seems to be is a minor version of relics, more powerful than just your basic minor artifact resource, but less powerful than a souped up relic. On top of that as well, it seems we can sell these bits and pieces we pick up, these specimens, for cash, for energy credits if we want to. Contained within is also a dedicated vivarium for live space fauna containment and observation. On the previous screenshot, you'll have noticed there was a relic tab, a collection tab, and finally a vivarium tab. The vivarium is a controlled environment where wild space fauna can be cared for and studied. Space fauna in captivity will grow faster and breed more easily than in the wild. These creatures can then be dissected for research, resources, or their genetic material. With the development of the controlled mutations technology, which must of course be a new technology we're going to get with this DLC, space fauna can be customized to form a fleet which will grow and become stronger over time. And the interesting image on your screen now is a uh, artist representation of one of the technologies we're going to get in the game. These non-lethal projectiles can safely capture and transport space fauna, like a space whale, a Tianki, to our vivarium, where they can continue to reproduce new specimens of their kind. So this is a big buff if you're a big fan of running an empire that requires having lots and lots of space fauna as fleets. Looking at you, uh, hive mind reanimators. The trailer also gives us a screenshot for this new vivarium. Looking at that screenshot, we can see that having lots of space cattle is going to provide you with food, which honestly I'm, I'm kind of into actually. This means we almost certainly will never need farmers ever, ever again. This is producing monthly, it looks like 4,182 food, which is awesome. Uh, combining this with other space-borne food production and possibly a bit of trading, yeah, farmers may go the way of the dodo, finally. Thank goodness. Yeah, I can't imagine actually playing a game where you never, ever need farmers, of course, outside of being a machine or something. Uh, but then what else are we seeing on the screenshot? So, we have lots of specimens here. We can, uh, we, we get an age for them. They will have a growth stage where they get to be a bigger uh, animal, I'm assuming. Below that as well, we're seeing there's a reproductive status. So every amount of unit time, I, we don't know exactly how long that'll be. Maybe it's 12 months, maybe it's five years, maybe it's, you know, 120 months, maybe it's 10 years. We don't know yet, but they will be getting offspring. You can turn on auto culling to then liquidize the offspring for food, for example, which does sound, as I said, rather tasty. So we won't ever have to be farmers in space, but we might be cowboys, or whatever the equivalent is of being a space cattle herder. Though perhaps technically we're space whalers, I suppose. Um, though I guess we didn't really eat whales, it was more for the oil. Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's move on to the next screenshot. And if you're enjoying this video, please, auto cull that like button. The void is full of life, and the Grand Archive is bringing us two new forms of space fauna. Cutholoids are ambush predators that will lurk within asteroid belts waiting for prey. Culling and dissecting these creatures will allow the harvesting of their genetic material for cloning purposes as well as other resources. Looking at this screenshot, they do look rather nasty. I would not like to run into one of these in the depths of space, good lord. Alongside that, we are getting void worms a more parasitic threat with a full life cycle that can now grow into a mid-game crisis if you leave their populations to breed. These are weird. If this variant species were allowed to spread unchecked, it could upset the balance of the galactic ecosystem entirely. So this DLC is bringing us a brand new mid-game crisis, the Void Worm Plague, which is not a plague in as much as we're all going to get sick. It's a plague where there's too many void worms and they're probably going to eat everything or, or something like that. Again, this seems to be somewhere along the lines of the other endgame crisis kind of crisis where there is a military threat we'll have to take out with lots of guns, lots of weaponry. We'll probably be shooting and killing these void worms if they come and try and eat us. Unless there's also going to be a scientific component to this where we can research a special product to spread some sort of disease amongst their population to kill them. Hopefully there are some, you know, repercussions to that. Maybe the disease becomes uh, able to change between species and we accidentally wipe out the Tianki. I'm, I'm just, you know, blue sky thinking here. But, but let's see what they do with this new mid-game crisis. I'm... Definitely feeling hopeful about the new void worms and the new mid-game crisis, especially if it mixes things up a bit. 
As mentioned before in the full feature list, the Grand Archive Story Pack will be coming with two civics, two origins, and two new tradition trees, each focusing on either different aspects of coexistence with alien fauna, or the hunt for the hidden mysteries and treasures of the universe. Looking at the icons here, it does look like one of the tradition trees will be focused on eating, or possibly getting money from. I'm not sure if that is like a chicken leg, or an alien chicken leg, or it's a money bag on top of piles of sand. It could be either. The other does seem to be something to do with uh, controlling aliens, possibly. That looks like a, an alien eye. I'm getting some strong uh, Cthulhu-type vibes, um, or, or possibly... I can't remember what it's called. There's that eye. Uh, World of Warcraft have used it quite a lot. The floating eyeball head thing. It's a dungeon boss. I forget what that's called. Somebody remind me in the comments below. I'm sure, sure you lovely people know. In terms of the origins, one has clearly got something to do with Discovery. The other... Uh, on the left with the the claw is definitely uh, more to do with alien fauna and coexisting with the, with the environment. And then it's nice to see every single civic will be playable by every type of empire. Machine empires, uh, both individualist and collective machine empires, also megacorps, regular bio empires, and hive minds. They all have access to every type of civic, which is nice to see. Often the machines, the collective, uh, you know, the gestalt machines get left out quite a lot and uh, sometimes the hives too. So, so I'm definitely happy to see that every authority will get access. So what do I think overall about this announcement today? After the release of Cosmic Storms, I'm definitely feeling very cautious about any Stellaris DLC coming out, especially one coming out so soon after Cosmic Storms, which was very much a take it or leave it DLC. I imagine some people that have the season pass might actually just disable that DLC rather than playing with it, which is honestly really sad. I don't think there's many Stellaris DLCs out there that if you owned it, you would just choose to turn it off. The Grand Archive is going to be providing us with some new features, the space fauna mechanics allowing us to build our own space fauna once we've harnessed some genetic material, harvested I should say, not harnessed. That mechanic definitely looks cool, being able to build fauna like Tianki or, or whatever at your spaceports, at your shipyards, requiring only food and not alloys. That definitely seems awesome. We'll have to see what the balance is like on that. Looking at the screenshots, it does look like it's going to cost an exorbitant amount of food, much more than the equivalent price in alloys would be. But I guess this could give us a reason to have food stockpiles in the mid to late game. Again, it depends on what the weapons are like on these ships. If we can't, you know, bolt a, a large kinetic artillery or some, 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 uh, some torpedoes or something onto a space whale, it's probably going to be suboptimal late game and you probably won't run it over running your regular cruisers or battleships. But again, we will just have to see. The, uh, the, the Grand Archive itself does seem to be kind of adding a polish onto relics. It's, it's kind of a reinvention of the relic system in some ways, but you're going to be getting far weaker relics and many more of them. That might provide some additional interest, though I suspect after a few playthroughs, you'll stop really caring about the specimens you pick up. You probably won't even look at that tab. You'll just pick them up and take the bonus and say thank you, whatever, and move on. I definitely have some concerns about the replayability of that feature. And taking a step back, I, I must admit, this DLC and the Cosmic Storms DLC have really in a lot of ways kind of come out of, it seems, almost nowhere. I. I can understand the motives behind quite a few of the DLCs we've had in the past. For example, you know, Federations, expanding on how the Federation mechanics work. Uh, Nemesis, giving us the entire Become Your Own Crisis system and giving us Galactic Empire and all that fun stuff, expanding the Galactic Community's impact and reach. Uh, you know, we've had the Species Packs, which are their own unique little thing. You get your, uh, new Species mechanics, new portraits, new origins, new, new, new civics, some new traits sometimes. That sort of stuff can be very exciting. Uh, the Machine Age, Utopia, uh, Megacorp expanding kind of base game features that we've had for a long time. This story pack does seem to be going in a direction that I definitely wasn't expecting and I'm, I'm not really sure which base game mechanics it is expanding on that people wanted to have expanded. I, I do see that Space Fauna can be expanded on here a bit and that could be interesting and Yes, we've kind of reinvented the relic system somewhat and we've got new versions of that, but overall I, I'm definitely a little bit confused. On top of Cosmic Storms, this DLC and the previous one do seem to be going in an artistic direction for Stellaris that I definitely wasn't expecting. 
and we don't seem to be getting some features that I know the community have been asking for repeatedly. I'm looking at you, internal politics, and a DLC focused on that, as well as, you know, a, a whole host of other things. Uh, fleshing out the genetic ascension path more. We've had fleshed out Machine Age. We also would really like a, a more of a fleshing out, possibly, to the psionic ascension now, given that machine and cybernetic ascension is so fleshed out. I guess with that one, though, it, it, it's more that we've had such a good DLC with Machine Age, it, it does leave us wanting more with, with psionic and genetic ascension, so maybe we won't see that. But uh, what I really am trying to boil down to here is that I think there are other more important base game features that the community would like to have expanded on in a DLC that are not being addressed with Grand Archive and were not addressed with Cosmic Storms. Cosmic Storms were the most hated mid-game crisis. To expand them and put them into a DLC was honestly a really left-brain maneuver. And uh, yeah, we've seen how that's gone with the community response. Overall, though, I'm just a space lizard from the planet Zin. What would I know? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I would really love to hear your opinion, your feedback, you know, what's going on. For the first few hours after the video goes live, I'll definitely try and read and respond to as many comments as I can.